It can't all be roses, can it? Sure felt like it last night if you indulge in a little hard knocks as the New York Jets take center focus here in the New York sports scene. Oh, yeah, the Yankees won. Oh, yeah, who cares about the Mets? We'll get to the baseball throughout. But the topic to start here with the New York Jets and the aura that Aaron Rodgers has brought to the Jet locker room has me left wondering, did you just watch that with rose-colored glasses last night? And, ooh, and uh, I got Aaron Rodgers playing. I got Aaron Rodgers playing. Was there any room for, uh, I don't know if I like that. I have one of those, Tommy Lugauer, and that is Robert Sala. Yeah, Sean, I thought that was the biggest takeaway from that Aaron Rodgers love fest that we saw last night. And it opened up with Sala talking about hen pecking or crows or eagles. I still don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> we'll I was that confused. In a couple minutes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was just a complete uh, love fest for one Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, which is fine. And by the way, Aaron Rodgers brought in as the leader, and we could go into whether you feel like his shtick is real or if it's phony. But one thing was definitely paramount. This is Aaron Rodgers' football team, which from a quarterback standpoint, I mean, obviously, no duds, Aaron Rodgers' football team. But from a quarterback standpoint, is something that has been extremely needed for the New York Jets, a stabilizing presence under center, something that, for the better part of our lives, they frankly haven't had. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you could tell that the aura and the energy around this Jet team, again, we're getting it from behind-the-scenes cameras, seems to be paramount. But with that comes a real question about the head coach. And Robert Sala, in the bits and pieces we saw, came across as a guy who's in awe himself of a quarterback, which you never want to be as the guy who's supposed to be the alpha leader of the room, necessarily in awe. You'll be happy to have him, no doubt about it. And as a guy who's almost so giddy fanboying it that you have to wonder if his message as the head coach of the team comes across or if this is really Rodgers running the show. Now... Does that mean that the Jets can't go win 10, 11 games, can't win the division with Robert Sala? Of course they can. And by the way, you could convince me they're more likely to win the division now than I would have thought 24 hours ago, getting a real kind of behind-the-scenes feel for it. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty and the ultimate goals of this football team and this fan base, you know, Robert Sala doesn't come across as a guy who fits the bill of head coaches. Now, uh, successful head coaches. Well, Sean, also, too, you got to look back at last year where Robert Sala, and now I'm not saying it wasn't warranted, but they basically ran a mutiny on defense for Zach Wilson. Now, Zach said stupid stuff, especially after the Patriot game. He was not a leader, and I thought he came off very likable. The guy was basically eating a fish sandwich by himself all alone in the locker room, (laughs) and it's all about Aaron Rodgers. And, oh, by the way, here's the the poor schlub he's replacing, Zach Wilson. But Sala's got a lot to answer for because he allowed that locker room to run a mutiny. The T-shirts? Yeah, yeah, Mike White. They basically had a parade for the guy, and now they're all fanboying over Aaron Rodgers. I mean, McCall. Harmon basically saying, yeah, I watched you my entire life. McCall, you played with Patrick Mahomes. Can you (laughs) calm down, please? Exactly. Which is fine, by the way. If you're a player and and you're excited to play with Aaron Rodgers, I think that's great. That's part of the energy. But the head coach needs to be the head coach. He needs to be the guy that, no doubt about it, I'm the leader in that room. I am going to guide you, and we're happy to have Aaron Rodgers as his co-pilot. 100. Aaron Rodgers came across as the pilot, for lack of a better pun, involving the New York Jets. I'm going to give you a list of 15 names, all right? Okay. This is the Cinco Day 15. Oh, and by the way, Cinco Day 5 comes your way at 5 o'clock later on today and every day at 5 o'clock. Yes, the Internet's favorite section uh, segment and your mom's. Okay. Now you tell me whether you believe this name is somebody who has a vocal presence about them knowing watching NFL football. Okay. Andy Reid. Yes. Sean McVay. Yes. Bruce Arians. Yes. Bill Belichick. Yes. Doug Peterson. Yes. Gary Kubiak. Okay, you want to say, oh, maybe, maybe. Pete Carroll? Yes. John Harbaugh? Yes. Mike McCarthy? Yep. Tom Coughlin? Yep. Sean Payton? Oh, yeah. Mike Tomlin? Yep. Tony Dungy? Uh Uh-huh. Bill Cower? Yep. John Gruden? Yes. Those 15 names I just gave you are the last 15 head coaches to win a Super Bowl. Of course, Belichick and Reed have won a couple in between there. Yeah, a lot of titans of the industry there, for sure. Now, watching last night on Hard Knocks and knowing what we know about Robert Sala, the head coach, it's not saying he can't be one of these guys, but I don't know how you see the breadcrumbs there that he is one of those guys. And to win a Super Bowl, you need to have a presence about you as a head coach and a commanding control of the room And it's one hour on an HBO or a Max miniseries, and and that's fine. But we've learned a lot about head coaches that have failed in the past on this show. See Hugh Jackson, see Joe Feldman. 
I'm not sure how you walk away extremely confident in Robert Sala and basically just letting Aaron Rodgers be, uh, you know, the creme de la creme. Yeah, and that's the thing, Sean. You know this in the NFL, dude. It comes down to three things in my mind. Head coach, quarterback, and motivation week in, week out. What's the team that's more motivated? You have your top echelon teams. You have your lower level. Everybody's in the middle. And the Jet fan, you listening out there, that is maybe a little upset that people don't want to roll out the red carpet and say, hey, we think the Jets are going to win. They're going to win a Super Bowl. And they want everybody basically to bend the knee. One of the reasons other than the fact that Aaron Rodgers is an aging quarterback, is the head coach. Right. We don't believe in the head coach. And if you think you're winning and winning big and winning a Super Bowl without an excellent head coach and a quarterback, you are sadly mistaken. We have seen it time and time again. So here's the bottom line if you're a New York Jet fan at 877-337-6666. I am sure you were geeked out. Uh, I saw social media was a buzz last night, at least locally here. Jet fans can't wait to see Aaron Rodgers in the Jet uniform. I mean, it was rocking and rolling. Well, forget about just Jet fans. McAfee said they're winning the Super Bowl. Right. Jerry this morning said they're winning the I Super know, Bowl. I, if I'm a Jet fan, that would obviously Boomer, drive me Boomer crazy. Boomer basically is Rodgers throwing 50 touchdown passes. Can we calm down, Boomer? Please, honestly. This is the deal. The Jets have in front of them a very tall task of a schedule. Yep. They have in front of them, though, the opportunity that this could be the best Jet season that we've seen in quite some time. Mm-hmm. I believe a little more than I did yesterday about you know maybe double-digit wins for the Jets. But what is your real end goal here if you're a Jet fan? You want to be in the mix? You want to win a Super Bowl? That's fine. Do you think Robert Sala's getting there? You cannot tell me the Jet fan base that's been beaten down and beaten down and beaten down, that finally feels like they have momentum with the roster building, gets Aaron Rodgers. At your core, you don't have a single concern about this football team? and this, Everything is just they're going to win 14 games? Well, dude, They're going to go to the Super Bowl? Yeah, and the other thing about yesterday, getting giddy and stuff like that, I mean, it was, it was practice. It's a bunch of guys in their underwear not tackling each other. I mean, let's let's relax here. And there is stuff. Garrett Wilson, Sauce, I understand that. And Aaron Rodgers, I mean, Ulbrich basically saying, yeah, do you see that pass? He's the only guy in the NFL who can make that. Excuse me? Right. Have you heard of Patrick Mahomes, Allen, Burrow? Can we relax a little bit? Rodgers is a Hall of Fame quarterback, no doubt about it. And you're right, Sean. It all starts at the top. Salah has not been a good head coach. The, all the pressure in the world is on him. It's on Joe Douglas. If they have another failed quarterback situation here, the Jets, they're both out. We know that. Yeah. Wilson it was a total flop. And again, he came off likable in the series because it's like the old like, hey, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. He passes gas. We're going to talk about him. And here's poor old Zach Wilson basically having a salad all by himself. Yeah. And he didn't come off like a spoiled brat or all these things that we think he is. He came off like a cool dude, I thought. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, same, same goes for Sauce and Garrett Wilson. We'll mm-hmm. get to them through throughout the show, and Rodgers should be the star of the show. We heard Tiki say yesterday that Rodgers basically, from what he understood, maybe he didn't want to be in the movie, he wants to be the star of the movie, and you heard him talk about it on Hard Knocks, if you saw it, and if you didn't, his basic comment was, we thought, yeah, maybe this could be a distraction, that's why he didn't want to do it, but it's been great. Now, why would Hard Knocks be a distraction? Let's think about that at the core. Okay. Because we're already starting a show, WFA and Afternoon Drive, on this television show. So right off the bat, it, it garners attention. Yeah, but it's a welcome distraction from the crappy baseball teams in this town. Oh, believe me, we're happy to talk about it. But why would a team view Hard Knocks as a distraction? The answer is because somebody is going to inevitably come out of it looking bad to the general public. Sure. Hugh Jackson looked awful. Joe Feldman Looked awful. Well, you're peeling the curtain back, Sean. Right. Frank Reich on that in-season with the Colts, by the way, looked pretty awful yeah. as a head coach. Frank, uh, um, Robert Sala last night, and we have four episodes to go, and maybe this was all about Rodgers and, and shining his shoes. He did not look like the kind of head coach that commands a locker room and takes them to the promised land of a championship game and a Super Bowl. And maybe that's not a big deal in terms of well, he builds it up there, get him 10 games. Maybe you do make a change and you find the more alpha head coach, but it's such a short, finite window with Rodgers that the Jets can't afford to miss on this quarterback and coach combination. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's from the beginning, it, even with Woody Johnson, it was basically like, you know, the bachelor and, and Aaron Ro- uh, Aaron Rodgers picked uh, the Jets and gave him a rose. Woody Johnson was like, oh, I'm so happy he considered us. And and Sala last night was basically bowing down to him. And every Jet, I watched you growing up and he, here's a necklace and here's my phone number. Right. You know, like all this stuff, you have to be the head coach. And that speech in the beginning, what the hell are you talking about? Do we have the speech? Let's play the speech. Three nights ago, I was in deep thought, deep thought, deep thought. And I was thinking about you guys. I was thinking about you guys. I was thinking about all the excitement surrounding us, man. All of it. All of it. Did you know that the only bird, the only bird in the world that will attack an eagle is a crow? It's a crow. 
That's the only bird that will actually have the balls to attack an eagle. It will perch on the eagle's back and peck at its neck. Or he's stupid. So rather than fight back and tearing a crow to pieces like it can, the eagle spreads its wings and it soars as high as it possibly can. It keeps going and going and going as high as it can. And the higher the eagle flies, the harder it is for the crow to breathe. I hate the eagles. Eventually, the crow suffocates, falls back down to earth, and dies. Oh, that's pretty That's what happens. Yeah. Guys, we got a great deal of hype around us. We do. All kinds of expectations. And with great expectations, we know that there's going to be a whole lot of people, a whole lot of crows expecting us to fall on our you face. you got to drop the Spider-Man line there. What are you doing to find that little bit more to get us closer to being a great team? You finish practice, now what? You finish meetings, now what? Lifting, mm -hmm. now what? A rep, now what? And if we come together and we challenge ourselves to do a little bit more every day, the crows, they'll fall by themselves. <laughs> Embrace uh. what we're capable of. Embrace the fact that we aren't the same old Jets. Oh, boy. Embrace the fact that we do have a target on our back. Embrace the fact that when teams look at our schedule, they're not chalking us up for a W. They're coming at you. That's exactly where we want to be. I mean, that's Cornball Central. Oh, my God. Sean, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. I mean, yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> now, here's the deal. I don't know what motivates young people anymore, all right? I barely get motivated to get off the couch at night. Money. Right? Money, I'm sure, <laughs> motivates. We played yesterday in the Cinco de Five O Rex Ryan, where he just rants about, why can't you do that? You know, let's get a bleeping snack, right? Yep. Yep. That was way more fiery than Robert Sala. Yeah, it was like a wrestling promo. Here's the issue of Robert Sala and leading the show, and that's supposed to be like your capture you moment for the series that this guy is your leader of men. It's the hook. It's, it's the, the first hook. thing. Yep, it's, it's the, the hook. hook. Yep. Listen to what this guy is to say. Hook. We know here in New York, where did you hear that already? Robert Sala gave the same spiel to the media. He's re he's addressing the team, going to the media, which tells you, and by the way, Tiki had told this off air, he saw the same quote on Instagram. Robert Sala's just scrolling social media going, oh, this is good, I'll use this. Well, dude, he's like a comedian, too. He's working on his material. Yeah. He he did the material with the uh, reporters for Hard Knocks. Just test it out to see if anybody laughed. He's like you before the show. And now let's hear Robert Sala to the press. There's a lot of people who are hating on us. There's a lot of people looking for us to fail. There's a lot of crows pecking at our neck. <laughs> Uh, but all you can do is spread your wings, keep flying high until those crows fall off and suffocate from the in inability to breathe. What is this, a graduation speech? <laughs> but he keeps using it as his go-to. And I say this because I am sure Andy Reid, Sean McVay, Bruce Arians, Bill Belichick, uh, Tom Coughlin, Peyton Tomlin, on and on and on have said some weird corny stuff. But they have a presence. Robert Sala is addressing the team with the same recycled material. And oh, by the way, a quick Google search will tell you Large birds like owls, vultures, and hawks can take down eagles in flight. So a crow isn't even the only bird that can take down an eagle. Is that right? Yes. Oh, boy. He doesn't even have the quote right. He doesn't have the quote right. He leaned on TikTok or Instagram and believed what he read on the internet. He got it wrong. He wouldn't he be the first. The, but he yes. got the quote wrong. Owls, Not a good start. hawks, and vultures can take him down, too. Are you kidding me? That's bad. So, look, can the Jets reach the promised land with Robert Sala? Of course. But when Tiki tells me the other day, this is where I was pushing back on him, I got to see it. I got to see it from Robert Sala as a head coach, amongst those other things. So, Jet fans, at 877-337-6666, while this is all roses and rainbows and everything, and you should all be fired up, and I'm sure you're pumped up, you can't tell me you have no concerns about this team and I believe Robert Sala is the biggest concern of them all. By the way, speaking of Teak, and this is Evan and Tiki, Lugie Marash filling in, our boy Tiki caught some strays last night for his outfit on <laughs> Hard Knocks, and there will be no, as long as I'm sitting here, as long, someone else said this once ago on, on WFN, as long as I'm sitting in this chair, as long as Marash is sitting in that chair, there will be no Tiki Barber slander on this show. The dude is jacked. He looked good. He, yeah, he looked like he was going to Hamptons or something like that, but don't be hating on Tiki's outfit. Don't be a hater. Yeah. You ain't popping if you ain't got no haters, so don't hate on Teak. You got to get the saying right. All right, Carmine is in Eaton Calm Town. Down. Carmine, you're on the fan. What's going on? Gentlemen, Yo. I know you're both giant fans, and I know you piss a little bit of vinegar. <laughs> I, I agree with you 100%. Except Sal was talking about how important it is to Alpha. Uh, you mentioned 15 coaches, and this guy is can't be mentioned in the same sentence as those 15 coach, coaches. And what he allowed to happen last year? Yep. But you know, let me say, are you kidding me? This guy's running the franchise. His only chance 
is to latch on to this guy, and hopefully he can bring us to the promised land. It's a hope. I'm not saying, hey, but when in, and we're going 14 and 3, you couldn't possibly even dream of it if that was Wilson there. But just hearing whether or not that we believe that he's the alpha, alpha who got? She's nothing. <laughs> yeah. But that's a problem, Carmine. That's a big problem. Look, there is a reason that the Packers have fallen short So many times in this Roger era since that Super Bowl, what is it, 11 years ago now? And there is a reason why it feels like there is disconnect with Aaron Rodgers' offenses in so many of these big spots. Now, of course, there are other moments where the Niners are gashing him on the ground a few years ago, or he's in a shootout with Tom Brady. He hasn't been all dog, you know what, in these spots. Nope. But last year, they did not feel like there was a disconnect in Week 18 versus the Lions. The year before in Lambeau, they can't move the ball versus the Niners at all. You know, some of these collapses they've had as well, Seattle. I believe that the reason Mike McCarthy was run out, it's probably the same reason Bruce Arians was run out at the end there with Tampa, and we don't, we'll never know the true story. A quarterback like Aaron Rodgers has an aura and ego, and you can see it, believes he knows more football than these head coaches. And I think that Robert Sala, probably knows more football than any of us could ever imagine, is okay bowing down to that because his no, he knows his livelihood is on the line based on the success of Aaron Rodgers and this team. Yep. But in the end, when you get to the nitty gritty of big games and your hope is that the Jets are playing big games, you know, you got to have a guy that puts stones on the table as a head coach and can be the leader of men. And if you're just sitting back complacent, you know, having Rodgers, you know, demand his headset in a Hall of Fame game, and it's just the precedent's already being set and we're already getting a behind the scenes look. And there is absolute, I'm going to hammer this point. Absolutely a reason why the Jets didn't want to be on hard knocks, and I think it's the reason last night. Jet fans will ignore what they saw last night and only point to the happy. What the rest of America saw was a head coach that's not in control of his team. Yeah, and you're going to hear this word a lot, structure. Do the Jets have any structure? It doesn't seem like it. It didn't seem like it last year, and when you think about structure and you think about an organization being functional and not being dysfunctional and having that structure, it starts and ends with the head coach. This is Aaron Rodgers' team, but at the end of the day, Robert Sala is the head coach. Everything that happens is under his watch. He has to control things. He allowed that locker room to eat Zach Wilson alive, whether he deserved it or not. He allowed all the praise for Mike White. And now you have a team that's basically groveling at Aaron Rodgers, and there needs to be more structure, and Sala has a lot to answer for. Lewis, he needs to talk at Lewis. You're on the fan. Where the heck is Tiki and Evan? I mean, you guys are so off base. You guys are trying to be shock jocks. Yeah, go ahead. Being a shock jock. You're the only people in freaking New York who could hate on that speech. Okay, that was a great speech. Fine. Okay, Lewis, Lewis, he's wrong. Crows aren't the only ones that can try to take down Eagles. Ah, Google it. It doesn't matter if he's wrong or right. It doesn't matter. Okay, the message was right. Okay, Uh. and the Jets are a complete football team. You cannot critique this roster. Are they? Who's playing the only tackle? Thing you can say is the tackle. That's the only thing. How about you can on defense? Say, and we'll see. Well, then you're not a complete you, football team, are you, Lewis? There's very few well, complete it's, football teams. It's going to show up. The tackle situation is going to work itself out. Why? Because you hope it O-line, does. Because you hope it does. It's going to. Makai Beckton's getting stronger every day. I know you don't want to put all your eggs in his basket. Right. How did that, How did Rodgers do with back. young receivers last year? Not great. He's basically yelling at him half the season. They barely got on the same page. He didn't want to be there. Oh, he that's didn't want to be there. That's why. Yeah, there. that's why. Okay. And by the way, is he going to want to be here after week four the when the team's two Christian and two? Watson looked pretty good, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying Garrett Wilson yeah, sucks, yeah, but I'm saying he did. Yeah, took a while to get on the same page, though, did it not? Look at the tight end. The tight end room is so deep, they might have to trade one of them. Oh, you please. Guys don't Excuse me, what do you got? Travis okay. Kelsey and, uh, dare I say, Darren Waller and Lewis, Mark Andrews? Lewis. Calm down with the tight end room, Hold please. On. Both of you guys, deep breath for a second. Lewis. I don't want to take a deep breath. Lewis, nobody's picking the Jets for five wins, four wins, six wins. In fact, they should be a play- I'm admitting this. They should be a playoff team. I'm talking about the end result and goal when you add an Aaron Rodgers. You don't have a single right. concern about this football team? What is your goal? Do you just want to end the playoff streak? If that's it, then I'm with you, pal. But if, if your goals Listen, are, we got Aaron Rodgers, we have two-year window to win a Super Bowl, you're trusting Robert Salas, the head coach of this team? Oh, yes, I am, 100%. First of all, Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Robert Sala, you can just tell. They are on the same page. They think alike. That's probably one of the reasons why he wanted to be there in the first place. You by think, the way, uh, no, he didn't exactly Rogers have a lot of people that. knocking down his door either, by the way. Woo! The Raiders <laughs> went with Garoppolo. 
Woo. Lewis just declared that Salah might be one of the reasons Aaron Rodgers wanted to go to the Jets. I mean, and 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 he wants Evan and Tiki back, please. That that was his take on that. They're on the same page. What page? Aaron Rodgers page. That's the, the thing, page man. they're on. I really didn't turn on this microphone twenty minutes ago, wanting this to sound like a Jet hit parade because I do believe they're going to be a good team. Yeah. What I wanted was a Jet fan to be honest. You have to have some concern with this football team. There's no way you go from this long playoff of drought and Aaron Rodgers who hasn't won a big game in a long time, and go, that's it, our problems are solved. Right. Find the problems on this team. Well, sure. Every it, fan base, we know the Knicks' problems, the Giants' problems, the yeah. Yankees' and Mets' problems, we've dissected them. You mean to tell me the Jets are rolling into camp here, and you're walking away from last night's behind-the-scenes peak, and you think they don't have any problems? Keep the Knicks out your mouth, number one. Number two, look at the AFC. Mahomes, Burrow, Herbert, Allen, Jackson, Wilson. That's going to be a tall order. Is Rodgers in that class? I can't class? put Russell Wilson there. All right, but I will. Russell okay. Wilson. I, I will not uh, admit that this guy is done with football in his early 30s. I just can't believe that. He sucked last year, no doubt about it. But I'm not going to say he's done. That being said, Rodgers is right there. Hall of Famer. We know that. But again, outside of Tom Brady, Tom Brady, the great Tom Brady, all these legendary quarterbacks, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, they got older, they got banged up, they weren't the same. That's all. You have to have a little bit of pause of concern here. And everybody that wants to go goo goo and gaga because he's throwing the passes and practice and all that, guys, when he has to sit there and get into week one, week two in the NFL, playing these teams, playing these hard quarterbacks, it's not going to be easy. Should you be excited as a Jet fan? Absolutely. And now's Can the, the Jets time make to a run? Be, by the way. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But we can't just sit here, Sean, like they've won three Super Bowls in a row and everything's perfect and they're just going to run through a very tough conference. Right. And 877 337 6666. Look, there's got to be concern. If there's not concern, you're not being honest with yourself as a Jet fan. Yep. Have you learned nothing about being a Jet fan in your life? Nothing is easy. And the idea that the addition of Aaron Rodgers based on the buildup of this roster suddenly makes things easy is crazy. Jeez, Nick Van Exel last night told Sauce Gardner it ain't going to be easy. In the division. Is he graduating Cincinnati? I, I don't really know. But. <laughs> Sean, my thing is this, and, and back on our last caller, is how could any Jet fan have total faith in Robert Sala? How could, what have you seen? Yeah. And I, want, I'm, I don't want to hear about the quarterback situation anymore. And I hate to make it a Jet Giant thing, but look at last year, week one. If Joe Judge is coaching the Giants, they lose. Yeah. They bring in Brian Dable, they win that game. Head coaches win games in the NFL. When has Sala ever done that? Thank you.